how, how many of you know Gojek? Raise your hand. Cool. OK, thank you, Dave. Um, and thank you, organizers, for putting this talk now and not giving a coffee break just before this talk, because everybody would have gone out, and nobody would have come back. So good. Um, I know you guys want to go home and or for after 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 party. I promise that I finish by 6.15. So you'll be happy. I have like uh, 100 slides to go, but we'll go fast. So it's like, go get Gojek, or Gojek gets go, or Gojek gets go, or whatever it is. Basically, um, I am. I'm Ajay. Uh, I work at CTO at Gojek. I started as graphics designer around 19 years back. Didn't end up. Uh, didn't think that I'll end up writing code instead of working on Corel Draw or PageMaker. That's what my first job was: design, user design, ad. I'm a developer. Coding now is a stress buster because I don't do full time. I I confess that I do around 40% of time or 50% of time, but I do write code. And I love still play, playing Age of Empires 2 and chess. So I still play Age of Empires 2. And the game is for the last 20 years. And I, nowadays, I run it on Wine. It works beautifully. Cool. Uh, I love working with communities. Many of you don't know. If you don't know, if you come to India, then you would have known me. I run GopherCon India for the last three years. I have been running RubyConf India for almost seven years. I'm running DevOps Days for seven years. And hopefully this year, we'll do GopherCon Indonesia. Hopefully. So we'll bring GopherCon to Indonesia. OK, why I'm here? Uh, I'm here because I work for this company now. Uh, they acquired my company. They thought we are smart. I don't know whether this is right or wrong. Time will tell. I always say, uh, no decision is right or wrong. It is based on the fact of uh, exposure of the facts to you. And only time tells you that it's right or wrong. So I'm not going to blame anybody for that. So Gojek is a bike taxi service, and we also provide food delivery, courier, and do some shopping. That's how the world looks at us, or that's how most of you look at us. But Gojek is not only these four things. Actually, 10 months later, I wanted to say nine months later, because nine months is actual time, but it was very, very funny. So I put 10 months over there. <laughs> but, but 10 months later, this is what happened. And now Gojek is a, a platform providing you 18 products and services. Out of those 16 you can use, uh, 17th, which is GoPay, this one over here. Uh, on left-hand side is your largest Indonesian wallet for payments. And on the right-hand side, GoPoints is one of the biggest loyalty program. Uh, so we reached from four products to 18 in like 10 months. I started our journey around uh, October 2015, and we reached there, there here by last year, uh, May 2016. So that has been this. And how Go played a role in this is very, very important. And I want to talk about that. So that's why this presentation is 0% Go, and but 100% about our journey. And I'm about to cover 138 slides. <laughs> But, but good thing is, so you can always look at a glass, a half full glass, and always say that it's half full or half empty. It's up to you, right? So my point is, since morning, starting with Robert's talk and till now, Dave's talk, we have been amazing, amazing, you have been amazing audience. I still see few of you are trying to sleep, which is okay, and I can do something about it. Like people do stretch, but I'm going to do cloud clap. Do you know scout clap? Anybody knows a scout clap? We'll do this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. On count of one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Larger, louder, louder. <laughs> so now your hands are tingling. Another 10 minutes to go. And if you feel sleepy, raise your hand. I'll make, it, make you do this again. OK? <laughs> and if you get bored, don't walk out. After this, there is an after party, and you can actually scold me there. Like, you suck, man. That was like really bullshit, and I'm OK with that. OK, so I always, always ask this question to myself. Why use a language, right? And the problem with a lot of people who actually get passionate about language is they don't understand that languages are like hammer. Hammers can do everything, right? Like, but when you all you have hammer, everything you can treat is a just nail, always. So you can also cut, a, cut something with hammer. It'll be a very bad job, absolutely shit job. But it is a hammer, right? So 
so but people say ajay you're talking about hammer hammer are not as malleable as languages are so it is okay language can be used as a toolbox but that's not true that is absolutely not true so again a question how do you choose a language right there are two ways to choose a language first way is buzz dev chen uses go i should use go awesome right <laughs> like it's totally cool right like nobody give a crap about ruby till the time dhs rail, wrote rails nobody right and now people are saying minson match is nice so we are nice right i used ruby before way before dhs i like used ruby in like 2005 yes or two uh, some random things second thing is purpose if you if you look at the purpose of a language then you can make a right tool out of it look at the language as a metal don't look at language as a tool and use yourself as a as a craftsman and make a proper tool out of it so when it's sword make it a sword when it's hammer make it hammer when it's saw when it make it saw right and if you do that then things get better but how do you how do you make a tool you make a tool only when you need a use of that tool in our language world it's basically we adopt a language when we have aha moments in our life aha i can do this with ruby aha i can write dsls with ruby aha i can do concurrency with go aha i can do awesome performance with jvm 1996 <laughs> but those aha moments right like aha i don't have to deal with pointers anymore correct that was 1996 i don't know 1999 when i was writing code for open office it was hell i don't know how many people know about open office open office does not render anything on local widgets if you know what i mean open office does not use a standard widget toolkit of any os they actually mimic that os like uh, java has I completely forgot what <laughs> java huh? swing. swing yes i completely forgot so java swing has themes right and it has windows themes and all this stuff so think about open office did not even use java use c++ based toolkit to render something and it's complex right so when you when, and that's those kind of pointers are hell so when java came in people were like so happy don't have to use pointers anymore don't have to get core dump how many people remember core dumps it's like crazy right yeah so those are aha moments and i'm going to talk about only those aha moments right but before that aha moments i'm going to tell you a joke because that's the joke about everybody who deals with the deployments and everybody who deals with the today's startups every startup i say so doing a front end is complicated but making a back end work i shouldn't say shit but making a back end work is really complex and very convoluted the thing is i'll tell you this joke So what and I tell this joke to everybody in my company every time like I repeat this joke all the time. So the joke is this. A doctor goes to a car mechanic to fix his car. Car mechanic opens the engine, fixes the car, life is beautiful, charges some money and gives the car back and doctor puts the key, gives the payment. Car mechanic says, "Can I ask you a question, doc?" Like, "Of course, you should ask me a question." Like, "Dude, look, I fix your engine, you fix people's engine, you get paid a lot, I get paid very less. Why? And then doctor says, okay, doctor takes the key from him, gets into the car, gets out again, opens the bonnet, gets into the car again, starts the car, comes out. And now says, look, this engine is running around. Change the piston. And can you change the piston now? And that is the difference between us and back-end engineers. So when you update a front end application you can stop the car update the application and restart it but you are working on back end it's like running hard and you have to change it while heart is still running you cannot stop it and that's what the life is and that's where languages or back end servers make a lot of difference so let's talk about those aha moments so first aha moment i have a colleague called sharan uh and this is his uh, quote and the quote says i would rather be coding than profiling garbage collection was killing memory and cpu so as always we were working a modern language called java at that point of time this 2015 um 
lot of people in South Asia or Asia are very fascinated about Java and a very amazing framework called Spring. I don't know why. For doing small things as well. They'll use Spring. And it's just, just hilarious. So we had, we had this one problem. It's called driver location service. So driver location service, uh, we get a location from a driver every 15 seconds. Uh, that means in a minute, we'll get four location pings. But how many drivers we have? We have around 250,000 drivers in Indonesia. And few of major percentage of that is in Jakarta. And we still don't do application-based sharding for driver locations. So that means we are dealing with those 250,000 pings every 15 seconds. And now you can think about a, a program which receives the pings, puts into damn RabbitMQ, and tries to write to a database, and puts into cache, so that when you search for a driver around you in geo uh, location, I can give you a driver nearest to you, right? This takes around 125 milliseconds in Java. And for this, we use Go. And I'll show you the statistics later on. But what happened was, we got 50x difference. That means it's like two milliseconds now. And that was one of the aha moments. Earlier, it was running on around 20 machines with our backend server. Now it runs on two machines with 100 MB RAM and 7% CPU. So that is a like crazy, crazy difference. And that was first aha moment we had, right? Uh, now let's do a second, second aha moment. So what happens is, one of the things is you have to, so we store the driver location now. By the way, I did not tell you one important part of my previous thing. So let's do a simple mathematics. So we get 250,000 drivers, 15 seconds each, one minute, how many, how many pings we got in a minute? A million. How many minutes in a day? 1440 minutes and 86,000 seconds, by the way. Yeah, so 1440 minutes means 1.4 billion records per day. And now I'm gonna make it more complex. When we allocate you a driver, which we allocate a lot of driver to you during the day, um, Gojek does around more than 600,000 bookings every day. I can't tell you a real number right now, but we do a lot of them, right? Uh, we are largest food delivery company in Southeast Asia. We do double the food delivery compared to all of food delivery combined in India. So given that, so when you allocate a driver to you, you want to see live tracking like Uber does or Grab does, right? We do much, much more live tracking over there. So we drop the interval to two seconds. That means we process around 2.8 billion pings per day. And we store it for analyzing it later. And we store it to analyze it real time. We do that as well. I'll talk to you about that as well. So let's hand over a small portion of job to go and see what happens, the driver selection. So driver statistics service. So what happens is there are multiple ways. I, I want to explain you this a little bit. So there are multiple ways to figure out how, you, how do you select a driver. How many times a driver in Uber or Grab has refused you? Since we are not in Singapore, I can't compare. But how many times, let's not take the names. How many times your favorite ride-hailing cab, dri cab driver refused you? that I won't go or cancel it or going in a different direction. A lot of time, like at least three out of 10 or two out of 10, at least. Like 10% chances are there, the driver may not come, unless you are in US or Singapore or Europe. But if you are in a Southeast Asian countries, driver may not come. And one of the reasons is that we don't care about their destination. Also, in, in Southeast Asia, it takes a lot more time for a car or bike driver to go somewhere. And if you don't bring them back to their favorite destination, it's not going to be good. The first thing you do as driver selection is you take your point, a GPS point, figure out who many drivers are near you. Correct? But that is just aerial distance. That does not mean that route to a driver can be like this big, who is like 25 meter away. And the route to a driver who is this straight, which is who is like 50 meter away. So you might want to choose the 50 meter away route, right? That point of time, what would you do? You would, if you don't use go routines, so we select around 50 drivers and figure out the route for all of them at once and bring it back. That is the first signal. Second signal 
is what time of day driver is there? So in Indonesia, it's a, it's a lot of drivers are Muslims, so they want to pray. So if we had to check when he is on the destination, how long will it take? Will it conflict with his prayer time or not? If it's not conflict with prayer time, don't give him the, don't give him the ride. Third thing, we want to see, does he want, does he want, so it's a food order or a um, human order, right? Does he want to carry a, <laughs> correct. <laughs> does he want to carry a 60, 70 kg human behind him or 3 kg of food? <laughs> Has he carried like four humans during the day and let's give him some rest, give him just food, right? These are the things which you have to take care of. If you take care of these things, if you think from there, so I don't know how many of you would drive the car the whole day. What we do is that we actually make our guys go out as a drivers. And yeah, make them do a drive the whole day and they figure out what's going on, right? They see how it's very painful, right? And there are a lot of things with this, we, uh, the ride hailing companies say, uh, how much acceptance rate the driver has, how much bonus you're gonna give, there's a fierce competition, how much money you're gonna give. But you keep adding these things to the, to the drivers, it's gonna be crazy. So driver status service gets called every time. It gets called 10 million times in a day. And I'll show you the graph for this driver status service. Actually, I have it, I think so. Let me see. I do have it, I have to like, Okay, I have to uh, exit the full screen and go here and uh, DSS. Oh, it's not here. Okay, I'll talk to you about DSS later. Uh, but it's, it is there. Anyway, so I'll talk to another one, other service. So that's what driver status service does. So if we figured out if we could, could calculate the statistics, keep it in memory, sort it in memory, go routines help us calculate for 50 drivers at one point of time. Instead of taking around 300 millisecond to a three second time, we did it around 20 millisecond. And that was great. So our response times got bigger. More response times means you are free for more computation, right? And if you're free for more computation, you can take more orders. So that's what we did. So first time what we did, we tried to do two things. Reduce, reduce disk IO. So try to keep everything in cache. Second, reduce computing time. And there are various ways to reduce computing time. So this is one of the ways to reduce computing. If you do parallel computing, so we are on 50,000 go routines actually who work around this and like they, they are pretty good. Third one was let's process asynchronously, but let's kill the queues in between. So what we had was, so a lot of things you do pre-processing, right? So how many of you, when you get out of the car and if your credit card is there, how many of you look that I, did I really pay or not? Very few, right? That means I can delay your payment a little bit. I don't have to be super responsive to your payment. As long as I process it, as long as you get out of the car, slam the door, walk, and then open the phone, it's like at least 15 seconds. And if I can process your payments, instead of five, five millisecond, or oh, 500 millisecond, doesn't matter. It will be good for me, right? Uh, so that's what we do. So we, what we did, we killed the queue, used channels, and did award, so we award points. Every time you use GoPay wallet, we award your points, which are like miles, and which you can reimburse for multiple things. You can reimburse for spa, free food, free ride, whatever, like we have around 60,000 partners in, in Indonesia, and we're growing more and more. So we did that, and actually, uh, taking care of Go points, Avoiding it as far as possible, and also processing frauds. So what happens is, uh, everybody in ride hailing knows that there is a fraud. There's an Android phone, which allows you fake GPS, and once fake GPS is there, a driver's friend will book the ride, driver will go on the ride with two phones, empty-handed, and use fake GPS, and not even drive the car or bike, and eat our subsidy that everybody deals with it. What happens today in subsidy world, so all of us charge customers less, pay drivers more. You know that, all of us are burning money, right? That's a fact of life. Uh, and we want to prevent that. How do we prevent that? The only way we could prevent that if we have Kafka streams and go routines. So we can process all fraud rules as soon as the booking is done, so that we can make sure that this driver is fraud and suspend him before he makes more damage. 
usually earlier what we used to do, we used to do the batch processing on these symptoms. We have around 300 fraud rules which every booking has to go through. There are behavior kind of booking. I'll give you one example. Uh, so one of the example is, uh, we get, so there are, there, are, there are bookings like people just do use, some of the drivers are so smart, they just use make booking call. So get auth token from us, and then just do make booking call. You can fake everything on Android, right? So they do make booking call, and once they do make booking call, they, they get the booking, and they try to fake the location. So what we do now is we say, okay, once this make booking call comes in, let's see whether human has generated this call or not. How do you figure out that human has generated this call? We don't have Google Captcha, I'm sorry. I can't have, I am not a robot kind of thing. So how do you do that? So basically you actually try to capture some behavior that will ensure that there is a human signature, right? I'll give you as simple as possible. I'll not get into more details around it, but I'll give you one simple possible. For example, you have either searched the destination or you would have searched the source you would have searched at least one thing, saying, I want to go there. If you make a booking call from exact lat longs, a direct reverse your code, that means you did not do any of that. It's impossible for you to do that, right? How much of a time you do? Every time you open Uber or, go, Uber or Lyft or Grab or Gojek, whatever, you at least put something in either source or destination. And then there are many things I can monitor. I can monitor intervals between the gap and whatnot. So the, I, can, I can monitor and figure out. So we process those rules. Uh, so the, the point service, which was, which was pretty, pretty crappy at that point of time, once we deployed uh, in Go, it's here. Uh, it is a, this is the latest right now. I'm showing you the correct, what is going on right now in Gojek, this new relic. And it has 1.04 millisecond processing time now. When we use Go, earlier we were using Java, and it's pretty, pretty uh, bad. And then there are, if you look at all the, I'll, I'll talk about this, but if you look at all the services, they are doing a lot of stuff around that. So I'll talk about that in like minute. So that was our second aha moment, third aha moment. But once we start doing this, we are starting things out. It became birth of microservices. People got excited. We started writing those microservices, and life was very beautiful. But if you do something like this, that means a service A calls service B, service B calls service C, service C calls service D. And if service D is responding to you in 200 millisecond, and a service A is responding to you in 5 millisecond, actually service A will respond to you in 200 millisecond, because it is waiting on service D. Got it? So what should we do over there? So we tried to, I, 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 I really, really um, uh, am old fashioned. I really, really don't want to use something just because it is supposed to be used, right? So somewhere you can use, so where should you use channels and where you should not use channels? That is a kind of question. Everybody wants to go use channels, right? So we can use channels in, 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 in driver pings because if you lose a ping, we know another, will come, another one will come in 15 seconds and we correlate the path. But if you lose a payment, we can't do that. So that's where we chose mix of channels and persistent queue and Kafka. That's what we did. So, so that's what we did and we put the queues. But once you have microservices, and I have a lot of them, if you're gonna, if you're gonna try to deploy them when you have hundreds of nodes of those, it's gonna be a comp complete useless thing. So what we did, next tooling we did, was to actually put CI into place. And one of the job I had, one of the only target I had, that anybody should go and press a button and get it deployed. By the way, we don't use Kubernetes yet. Uh, we use our own LXE containers, plain, plain containers. Uh, we use schedulers. We do use schedulers. We use Nomad sometimes, or we have our own schedulers. Uh, we use Chef, we use Ansible, Extreme Automation, you can shut down half of our node, and I can talk to you about application level sharding, all that stuff, very good, good stuff. But that's what it is. So you, if you have microservices, you have to have automation. Because we have 200 of them right now. So combined with automation and anytime deployment, we won that territory with Go, because Go is very small. If you want to deploy Go in the VM, even the smallest possible VM in, in, in AWS or GCP, Go will still be not able to use it 100% if you write proper microservice. 
But if you if you so I, if I if I take a nano instance or micro instance of AWS, try to run Chef in that, it won't run. It will run out of memory. So what you have to use is you actually use to use containers. If you don't know how to use Kubernetes, use LXC. LXC is as good as VM. Use LXC, increase the container, deploy it, decrease the container on runtime, don't have to reboot the machine at all. And that's much, much better. So this, is, this one is killer, right? I'll show you how many requests we get. But think about this way. Uh, all the time you use ELBs, HA proxies, what happens? If a, there is a bad request, those guys will transparently give you that request. Once you give that request to your application server, Suppose first server checks it, it's fine, it drops on queue or makes a synchronous call. At the end of the day, somewhere in the down the line, you will reject that request and return error, right? Once you return error, that means you wasted those many resources across the line. So can you drop the traffic? Can you drop the traffic if it's bad? Unfortunately, you can't drop the traffic in HAProxy or, so, or even Kong unless you are super good at Lua, right? And a and, and lot of people don't think that, that how much time, if you're doing IO driven, IO driven computing, network sockets, IO driven computing is expensive because they take real time. Like as long as you don't touch IO, don't touch disk, you're happy. But the time you start touching IO and disk, you are screwed, right? Completely screwed. So what we did is we wrote our own proxy in Go. And basically what it did, so we have something called gate one and gate two. So gate one is a proxy which does load balancing, because we need a gate to control, we need to get a, to throttle the throttle the traffic. But gate two is a smart proxy, which actually looks at the request, inspects across all the whole thing, looks all the parameters, checks from cache. For example, we drop the booking right at the drawer if a booking has a bad thing. If it is not matching our heuristic scan, we drop the booking. That means we save a lot of computing power behind. And we saved around 25% of our resources. So go to help, we wrote our own proxy to check bad requests and bots. And if that is the case, we just drop the request right there. So nine months, four products to 18 products, 5,000 orders per day to more than half a million order as of last March. And we have grown significantly since, a lot, right? So let's talk about our timeouts. So we have across all our services, this is our danger zone, which is five millisecond. And this I took around today afternoon. So this is what was going on. This, this is our performance across the time to connect to backend, we monitor that. This is our front end sessions, which gets converted into internal microservice API calls. So at any point of time, we do around 100 to 110 million requests per second. That's crazy. At any point of time, we have around 2 million devices connecting to us. We were doing something, checking their account balance, trying to book something, browsing food or whatever, right? At any point of time. And that is what we get. So if you look at our, all our services, this is what our services responses are. So we are around 20 milliseconds, maybe 30 milliseconds. Like this one, core API is 176 milliseconds. It is still the old, old backend. We are still processing Java Spring, I told you, right? That is a gift. This is a gift which keeps giving us gift every day. <laughs> <laughs> you should always have a gift uh, which keeps you giving something, right? And we try to take it. Uh, we right now have around 270 microservices today, uh, and they are working good. Uh, most of it, it is, a lot of it, it is in, not in Go, but we are going towards that. So, so we go for, we move to go only for three things, performance, current, concurrency, and scale. We did not move to go for web development. Right? Go is painful, right? A lot of people say Go is painful. Uh, talk to people who are actually uh, doing Bigo. Uh, uh, it's, like, it's like painful. It's like templating all the stuff. So why? Because if you don't use it appropriately, you're trying to do something else with something else. Go, if you just write APIs and Go, it's beautiful, right? It's awesome. So, so if you don't use it, any tool appropriately, you start blaming it, it's just wrong. So our experience, we use Go for heavy lifting and concurrency. Ah. And again, come back to my original point, when all you have is hammer, everything looks like nail. So don't make it look like nail. And so use toolbox full of appropriate tools, many, many things. I'm, I'm done. I'm trying to do it. 
fast, I'm going fast, I'm skipping, I skipped the entire knowledge base around why I use Go, do you know that? <laughs> I'm trying to pitch all the Go guys and not talking about Go at all, anyway. <laughs> so we use Go, Ruby, Java, and Clojure. Uh, Clojure is used for most of our uh, functional and uh, ML thing. Uh, we use Go for also machine learning, a lot of machine learning. Uh, we, we process around, uh, we process around uh, 60 to 80 billion events per day, uh, which is crazy uh, in terms of customer behavior and all the stuff. People say you should do only one and one, only one thing. And people did, did kind of frowned upon us when we went to so many microservices and all the stuff, so many products. So, but now I say we did only one thing better, that we created a platform of commodity service. So you can do anything at Gojek, right? So, and all our products are called Gojek, Go Send, Go Car, Go Tix, Go Massage, Go Clean, Go Glam, Go Auto, Go Mets, and Go Mart and Go Shop. So we use Go. So <laughs> we had to use Go, right? There is a, there is a what do you say, cosmic uh, relationship was formed long back. <laughs> Rob Pike won't know this, but yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, my name is Ajay. I'm seated at Gojek, and thank you for this. And if you want to ask questions, unless there are five questions, we'll not take questions. And we'll have an after party, because everybody wants to go. And if there are no questions, I'm very, very thankful. And once we get drunk, I'm much, much better. <laughs> so we are trying right now for some questions while Kyle Chalmers is up his computer. So we can still get questions. Any questions at all? No. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> This, 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 is one of the, this is one of the most amazing audience who did not ask question for the whole day. So thank you for that from all of our, all of our speakers.